What's up everyone? You're looking at a supercharger here that I took off of a 3.8 GM motor, General Motors. And uh, the supercharger was killed by the serpentine belt tensioner not being in good working condition. Uh, it's a common problem with superchargers. You gotta keep an eye on your tensioners. Gotta keep an eye on your belts. This one was getting a, quite a bit of oil in there too from um, the EGR was pretty clogged. There was a lot of oil inside uh, the intake manifold, PCV system. Um, anyways, cleaned all that out, did a part one video on this car already. I guess we'll call this a part two. So we ordered this um, supercharger off of eBay, came numbered with those numbers on it. Again, it's a junkyard. It's a junkyard uh, supercharger, but we didn't go to the junkyard and get it. We ordered it directly off of eBay. Uh, in the first video, I talked about how this car has a lot of these little vacuum lines everywhere that um, you'll need to address um, all kind of little vacuum ports, the back of the engine, any, everywhere. There's a lot of little vacuum stuff going on here and all these little vacuum elbows and everything they they get brittle they get hard over time and you got to take them off and they just pretty much come apart in your hand um also mentioned how i have the coil flipped upside down now how the, it had a misfire and, and there's obviously rust rust in the coil old wires so it's going to get a new set of wires um just to recap a little bit for those that haven't watched the first video i made on this engine last night you can go back and watch that. But in the video, I also talked about how I got the the new supercharger on, the, the new used supercharger on. And um, when I got it on, you can see here the belt, if it'll focus. Now the belt is coming apart. Let me see if I put it down, if you can see it, maybe. Uh. Okay, so you see how frayed the belt is? It was starting to come apart. And so, it definitely needed a belt. And um, well, this, this is your uh, serpentine normal belt that runs like off your alternator, water pump, power steering, crank, and AC. But this crank pulley, as you see, it has grooves for two belts. For the p main power steering belt, runs your water pump and accessories, and then it has this outer groove that comes further out, and it's what runs the supercharger. So, um you also have a couple pulleys and the the tensioner for the serpentine belt is this thing it's like a whole assembly and it actually sits in this position like this and so this tensioner was real stiff when i went to move it to put the belt on it was just really stiff a little too stiff i don't know what's up with that but uh yeah it was super stiff this pulley had some play in it. I've already loosened it, but even when it was tight, it had some play in it. And then this other idler pulley definitely had some um, play going on. Like right now in your hand, it feels good and looks good. But um, when it was on there with tension on it, you could feel the play in it. So uh, just to make sure we do this right, we've already invested the money in replacing the supercharger and you know these things will kill a supercharger quick these pulleys and and this tensioner so uh, obviously we need we want a, f a fresh belt so i want to just come back and show you now that it's taken apart this is the motor mount that sits down inside this bracket on the frame look at part one video you'll see it installed uh, i don't have a camera assistant to record me while i am actually doing the work and my son kind of took over my tripod and yeah so uh 
I'm just doing little explanation before and after videos, hoping this is at least a reference to help somebody. Um, the, 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 the serpentine belt tensioner comes off with three bolts, two on top, one on the bottom. Um, they're, they're actually nuts on the top. This had a ground that was grounded here. Um, I'm going to clean the surface on this. See the, the oil and stuff built up on there. So that is getting good continuity in between there. Kind of scuff that up with some sandpaper. And then put the new one on. Um, then the bottom is an actual bolt. The bottom is an actual bolt. And uh, it's right down there. It's a long bolt. And then you have your two bolt, um, two studs coming out the top. Um, then you have the bolt hole next to it, which is for this bracket. And um, if you can see, this bracket goes. Let's see if I can hold this with one hand and show you. This goes into that bolt hole. And then it'll go into there. That'll go into that hole there. And then over here, the bracket also runs on another stud behind, behind this power steering pump. Now, I could remove the power steering pump to get the whole bracket out, but I am not doing all that extra work. It's not an easy power steering pump to remove. The rack and pinion is in the way down there. The subframe is in the way from getting it easily through the bottom. So, and then you have this strut bar up top and this extra plastic cover that gives you limited space to get to it from the top. So I don't want to. I don't want to do all that extra just to remove the bracket. I just kind of shove the bracket off to the side and and i'm working around it um i got the engine on a jack and a piece of wood on the oil pan and there's your bottom bolt to that bracket there's the bottom view on it it's just a bolt uh, uh, i keep saying bolt it's a stud and a nut this car does need an oil change you see it's got a lot of leaky leaky and it's due for an oil change um so this pulley rides in here and then this bracket will be right up against it and to get that pulley out you're gonna need A T50. Now I use these because they're real short and they fit in tight places and the flat ratchet also fits in tight places. So all these are T50s. T50, T50, and the, the bolt here is a T50. And it goes on that other, uh, other pulley that's down there in that motor mount bracket. Nobody ever replaces that one because you see the amount of labor you have to do to get it out um coil pack has to come out you know motor mount has to come fully out technically the power steering pump you know um unless you're going to work around it like i am you gotta jack the motor up just to have a room up against the uh up against the frame of the car here from the bracket hitting there uh it, it's just a really tight quarters so nobody ever replaces these pulleys and this is original pulley it's never been replaced since 1997 on there and this supercharger spins up good and, and these pulleys need to be able to keep up you know um the pulley bolt for that one is normal thread tightens to the right loosens to the left when you buy the tensioner it comes as a whole assembly 
with this other idler on it and this one is reverse thread if you wanted to just buy the pulley and not the tensioner um motor mount seems to be in good condition we're going to reuse it and uh we're, this car will get a set of spark plugs and a set of spark plug wires with new tensioner and pulleys for the supercharger in a perfect world they would buy the tensioner for the other serpentine belt now and um there is no other idler for that other serpentine belt you just have your power steering your crank your ac supercharger up top you know the the tensioner is pretty much the only accessory pulley um that's that, that doesn't have another function um so it would just be replace the tensioner on the on the serpentine belt not on the supercharger belt but um that one needs to be ordered it's not in stock we're not going to wait a couple of days for it to arrive we're just going to do these bad boys on the supercharger they they take the most abuse and go from there and put it back together and give this lady her car back with a set of spark plugs and wires and uh, a new used supercharger anyways trying to keep these videos short y'all so um if you have any questions if you're attempting to tackle this job first of all um i say b level technician this is not something you need an a level technician to do but i wouldn't do it if i was a c level technician not on my own at least um it looks easier on video especially me talking telling you about it once you actually get into it it fights you a little bit um getting everything to line up and come back into place isn't isn't the easiest it is very doable but it isn't the easiest spark plug wires on this are buried in the back of the motor yeah let's see if you can see and there's there's one two and then the third one on the other side of that oxygen sensor so there there's tight spaces here you know i'm gonna end up removing this strut bar to do the spark plug wires next and and getting the spark plugs out is a whole nother story the front is real easy it's the back that makes you earn it but um anyways like i said trying to keep the video short if if anybody has any questions the bracket doesn't have to come all the way out is the main question i'm sure people would have does the bracket need to come all the way out in order to be able to get the pulley out? And the qu the answer to your question is right here on video. No, it does not. Pulley comes out just like that. Now, guys, I am the type of guy that I like to take a metal brush to the threads, clean them, lube everything up. Don't excess. Don't go crazy with the lube. Just a very thin, thin coat of lube help prevent rusting and, and also any kind of binding or oxidation. So I, I lube everything before I put it back, clean everything before I put it back. Uh, I'm not gonna be cleaning this because this is gonna be replaced new, but um, all this I will spray down and blow out and get as clean as I can get it. Um, get your leaves and everything out of the subframe here. My granddaddy used to say, if you're going to work on it, make it look like you worked on it or don't touch it. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching, y'all. I had a late night and I'm back here working on it because I got that Wrangler out there waiting for me to do a fuel pump on it next. And I need to hurry up and get this out of here. I got an Audi. I got to go pick up. I got too many cars. I got a Toyota Corolla. Uh, too many cars back to back to back to back. So I'll be making some more videos on those. But... It's like stopping to make the videos, takes up time, uploading them, all that. I try to make these videos hoping it helps somebody. I don't do this for likes or popularity or shares. I do this hoping that somebody out there in the world with a 3.8 supercharger that has bad tensioners or a supercharger they need to replace can look at it and be like, oh, wow, you know, okay. That's not that big of a deal. Maybe I can tackle that on my own. Now, if you need more specific, detailed information, uh, drop me a comment, man. If you seem like a normal person, even give you my phone number and have an old school phone conversation and try to walk you through it the best I can. Um, but like I said, I'm not working. This iPhone doesn't let you pause. So you have what you record and then that's it. I've tried to find like an app I can download to where I can pause and record. Anybody knows of a good one, definitely leave that in the comments. Um, 
but yeah it's pretty much part one part two until i figure out how to pause and record i really don't like this iphone xr this new iphone I'm, i i want to go back to a note i had the note 8 i want to go back to a note 10 this time uh samson to me was just a much better product uh as far as making videos and recording and being able to pause record easily upload easy uh editing i like iphone for, uh i don't i like iphone for other things but not for making videos um so yeah the, the i don't have the tripod either my son took over that i need to order another one on amazon something of that nature to where i can set it up and actually record myself while i'm working and hit pause and then go back and hit record again and be able to do all that but uh anyways i'm I'm making this video like this, hoping that, that this will actually help somebody out there. And uh, the supercharger is not that big of a deal. Uh, the hardest part on doing the supercharger, I would have said, are... Let's see if you can see them on here, man. These things are... Okay, if you look straight down... This thing will focus. Come on, focus. Oh, you see that little nut straight down at the bottom? That nut holds the fuel rail, and there's four of them in all four corners. There's another one. buried right there that one's not that hard that's one of the easier one that little tiny 10 millimeter nut down there then you got that one right there and this is again another one of the easier ones but those little four nuts for the um fuel rail you got your fuel rail lines um take a picture before and after good pictures this car has a lot of different vacuum ports running down different different vacuum it's, it's a lot of different vacuum stuff going on with this supercharger you got all different kind of vacuum uh routing on this you got vacuum ports everywhere with these little rubber elbows and you'll have to you'll have to go through a lot of them both on the front of the engine back of the engine you want to be able to remember where all those vacuums uh ports go you want to know your firing order uh i had i took the time and marked it make it easier on whoever else works on this in the future is going to get a new set of wires and i'll be marking the new wires this glare from the light you can't see it but yeah six with six three with three two with two five with five four with four one with one so they're all marked and make sure you got all your firing order correct um when you come over here again you're gonna do uh you're gonna end up removing the thermostat housing plan for that and put a new um uh, thermostat temp switch on there uh your throttle body gasket you're gonna need that when you do the supercharger Again, more elbows that need to be replaced. I just got creative with these because Auto Parts Store only had like two little packs of these things and I needed to get creative with the rest. Um, when the car came in, it didn't have a vacuum attached to here. I looked for where this could have possibly went, the opposite end of where this connects to. Uh, just by glancing on the engine, didn't find it. The engine seems to be running fine without it. Uh, I'm going to pick up parts for this. I'm just going to end up capping that off, putting a little cap on it and capping it off. But it was running fine even with it not being capped off. Uh, your EGR valve, this one was replaced. Uh, again, like I said, more um, vacuum there's a, it's real busy here in the back of the engine. You got a lot of stuff going on. So you want to take pictures. You want to make sure where everything goes. Make sure you when it goes to putting it back together, you remember exactly where the wires go. Not just where they go, but how are they routed. Um, you got the one that runs underneath here. 
and then runs across to the back over there you want to you want to be able to remember were these above the harness or below the harness you know these are these are things that you want to pay uh, attention to when you go to take stuff apart uh you work on these old engines they're brittle you try to remove stuff and plastic just is going to break on you so expect that um but yeah it's really it's really not a technician a job it's just a, a, a attention to detail pay attention to all the details make sure that everything you're doing um you're gonna know exactly which way it was routed and where it was connected to and stuff like that now the bolts on the supercharger itself um all all the main bolts to it one on this particular one it's a 97 y'all um i went to loosen them and it felt like i was just gonna rip the threads right out so what i do is i tighten loosen a little tighten it back all the way back loosen again a little more than i did tighten all the way back again loosen a little further back and little by little work it out like that uh once i get the threads about halfway out i'll blow in there if i can spray a little pv blast drive it back in then bring it back out again and it's time consuming it's